Today, we are going to talk about option strike price secrets. And this is part of our series options for beginners, because here's the deal. If you pick the right strike price, you're doing good. However, if you pick the wrong strike price when trading options, you can lose money, even though the stock does what you want it to do. So I think today will be super important. We'll show you practical examples so that you know what strike price to pick when you are trading options. Previously, we talked about options basics and we, we talked about the differences between stocks and options. And today we'll dive deeper into the five things that you need to know about the options. The first thing that you need to know is the strike price. So today we're going to talk about what a strike price is the different intervals for strike prices, how to pick the right strike price, important things that you need to know and much, much more. So let's talk about the basics. So what is the strike price? And in order to do this, I'm going to jump over to a trading platform so that you see various strike prices. I want to use Apple as an example here because uh, many people are familiar with Apple and Apple is one of the yeah, most frequently traded stocks when it comes for option trading. You see, the strike price of an option is the price at which the option buyer has the right to buy or sell the underlying security. And buying or selling depends on if you're having a call or a put. As an example, so let's go here to Apple and let's talk about if you, for example, buy a call with a strike price of 126 then you have the right to buy 100 shares of Apple for each contract that you're buying for $126. If you're buying a put option, and let's just say we're using a put option here of 122, and this would be a put, so this here is a call. Anyhow, if you're buying a put option of Apple with a strike price of 122, then you have the right to sell 100 shares of Apple for 125. So now let's first talk about strike price intervals. Because when you open an option chain, you will see all the different strike prices that are available. I'm gonna pick here an expiration of June 27th. Actually, let's go a little bit closer. Let's just go until June 4th. So here you see that for Apple, the strike price interval for this expiration date is $1. So you can buy an Apple call at a strike price of 124, 125, 126, 127. You get the idea. But you see, it's not always $1. The strike price intervals here are set by the option exchange and will change depending on the market conditions and the price of the underlying stock. Let's just switch back to our notepad here and talk about the four commonly used strike prices, which are $1, 250, 5, and $10. And you see, currently there are no strict standards and the exchange reviews and decides on each strike price based on the trading needs of traders. But here are some general guidelines provided by the CBOE, which is the Chicago Board of Option Exchange. First of all, we're talking about a $2.50 strike price. This is what you usually see when the underlying stock is trading between $5 and $25. This is when you usually see a $2.50 strike price. Then you have a $5 strike price interval. So these are the, the intervals. So a $5 strike, usually you'll see when the stock is trading between $25 and $200. And then we also have 10 point strikes. This is what you typically see when it is over $200. But you see, these are just guidelines and the options exchanges decide on strike price intervals based on the market's demands and traders' needs more than a strict mathematical formula. Let's go back to our example. So here, for example, we have Apple and Apple, as you can see right now, is trading at 127.60. So according to the guidelines, the strike price interval should be five dollars right but since apple is a very volatile stock that currently moves around what two dollar fifty per day on average the five dollar strike price would not make sense this is why here the exchange decided to offer a one dollar intervals to better serve the trader so now let's talk about the strike price the option premium and what i call the so-called moneyness 
when you're buying or selling an option, you have to choose a strike price. You have to choose a strike price and an expiration. And often you will hear terms. These terms are called in the money, which is ITM abbreviated. You will hear about at the money options, which is ATM abbreviated. And you will also hear about out of the money options. This is OTM abbreviated. Here is why this is important. Picking the right strike price is really critical for your success. So this is here what I call the moneyness of an option. And let me show you a very specific example of what this means. We'll stick with Apple as an example. And so Apple right now is trading at $126.70. So this is where right now we see that most brokers put a line here. And therefore, since it is right now dead smack in between two strike prices, 127 and 128, both of these would be called at the money because they're closest to the current price. These prices are considered at the money for call options. Anything that is below 125 at the money would be both for calls and puts. In this example, 100, what did I say? Oh, it was 126.70. So, okay, sorry, it would be 127 and 128. Where is Apple trading right now? It's 127.50. This is why I got confused here. Okay, let's go back. So it is at 127.50. For calls and puts, this would be 127 and 128. Now in the money option, on the other hand, so for calls is everything that is now below 127. So all of these strike prices that you see here, 126, 125, 124, would be considered in the money. Now for puts, it is the other way around. For puts, it would be all of the strike prices that are above 128. So on this side, the strike price of 129, 130, 131, all of this would be considered ITM in the money in this example. Now let's also talk about out of the money. So again, at the money, are the strike prices that are closest to the current market price of the stock. And then in the money for calls below the current price and for puts above. So now let's talk about out of the money option. And this is also fairly simple so that you know what is happening here. An OTM call option is anything that is here above 128. So in this example, it would be 129, 130, 131, 132. You get the idea. For puts, it is the other way around. So for puts, it would be uh, smaller than 127. So here, this is where all of these strike prices, 126, 125, 124, would be considered in the money when you're looking at puts. So on the right-hand side here, we have calls. See it up here. On the left-hand side, calls. On the right-hand side, puts. Now that we have the basics out of the way, let's talk about how to pick the right strike price, because this is super, super important. And when you look at an options chain, you look at all this and you say, wow, so many strike prices. So how do you pick the right strike prices? Are there some strike prices that are more desirable than others? And the answer is absolutely, because it really depends on what you want to accomplish. The reason why I'm telling you this is when we talk about specific trading strategies here in a moment, like the wheel strategy, or uh, we'll talk about the Power X strategy. These are different strategies that you can trade with options. So I'll talk more about this uh, in a moment. But this is where it is so important that you need to understand, first of all, do you want to buy an option and make money? Or do you want to sell an option and make money? Now. This is where the Power X strategy, this is where you would buy options and selling options. This is what you would do with the wheel strategy. So this is where you're collecting premium and let it expires worthless. So this is why it's very important that first you understand your goals, because based on your goals, you will see that some strike prices are more favorable than others. Let's keep it easy and let's say for this example that we are using here right now, 
let's just say that you want to buy an option because it's super easy then to show you what to do when you want to sell an option. We will use Apple as an example again. So Apple is right now trading at 127.45.46. Let's just say that you're bullish on Apple and expect Apple to move up to 135 within the next month. So Apple right now is trading at around 127.50, 127.60. And you think that Apple will move up to, let's just say, to 135. 135 within the next month, this is where Apple has been trading previously, approximately, what, a month ago towards mid-April. And this is where we can now take a look at the option chain and see what we can do, what our choices are there. So let's jump back onto the options chain, take a look at an OTM call. And again, OTM, as we know, these are the strike prices above 128. We could just say, you know what, let's just buy a call with a strike price of 135 because we assume that we are going all the way up there. So let's just see for 135, let's say until June 11th, today is May 20th. So we have around 22 days until expiration. Let's actually go out, let's do 29 days. Let's do a whole month here. So as you can see, the 135 call is trading between what 82 and 83 cents. We can take a look at the last traded price. So the last traded price is 82 cents. Now options come in 100 packs. So for one option, you would have to pay $82. This would allow you to buy 100 shares of Apple at a strike price of 135. So another choice is that you can buy an ATM option and add the money. As we said, this would be 127, 128. So let's just say we're buying an ATM call with a strike price of 127. So let's see how much this would cost us. So the last price of 127 call is, oh, doesn't exist here. So this is where they switched it over to $5 intervals. So I think it makes sense just for this example that we can be closer, that we go to June 11. So we got to adjust our 135. So here it is 48 cents. I just find it easier if instead of jumping around in $5 intervals, if you're doing it in $1 intervals right now. So the 127 is uh, last price traded here is $3. Let's just say $3 and 20. As you can see, it is way more expensive because this means since they come in 100 packs that you need to bring $320 to the table. This is the money that you would have to invest if you're buying this option. Now, this option would allow you to buy 100 shares of Apple at a strike price of 127. So lastly, our final choice here is that we could buy an ITM call. So let's just say we're buying an ITM call and uh, let's just say we are using a strike price of 124. Again, by definition for ITMs in the money, anything below 127 is considered in the money. So let's take a look at what the last price of this one is. And then you see why it is so important to pick the right strike price here. So the last price of this one is at the 124. Wow, $5.20. Most expensive one, right? And since they trade in 100 packs, it's $520. So as you can see, this is the most expensive one. Now, this option would allow you to buy 100 shares of Apple at a price of 124. Now, let's just say for whatever reason that Apple never goes back up to 135. Let's just say for whatever reason on expiration day, which here going back to June 11th. So let's just say on June 11th, which is the expiration day, Apple is trading at 134. So it never makes it all the way up, barely makes it all the way up. Right here would be 134. That's still a pretty good move, right? If you think about it, 127 going up to 134, that's around six and a half dollars. Uh, let's just use our handy dandy calculator here for a moment and calculate how much a six and a half dollar would be. $6.50 based on a $127.50 uh, 
strike price would be 5%. That's a 5% move, okay? So let's say Apple moves 5% in the next 21 days. So now let's see what our choices are doing here. So first of all, we want to talk about the OTM call option. So the OTM call option, so at 135, so this allows us to buy Apple at 135. But if it's only trading at 134, this would not make sense at all, right? Because why would we buy Apple shares at 135 if it is only trading at 134? It doesn't make sense. So therefore, this options expires worthless. It is worth nothing. So this means that you lose the premium that you paid for it, which is not much. So you lose $48. No big deal, right? But it's not good. We lost money even though Apple makes a 5% move. Apple moves 5%. Now let's take a look at our ATM call option and our ATM call option. We chose a strike price of 127. So this option allows us to buy 100 Apple shares at a price of 127. We could buy 100 shares at 127 and immediately sell them for 134 because that's where Apple is trading right now. So it moves to 134. That's what we said in our example here. So in this case, we would make 134 minus 127 that we can buy it for, that's $7 times 100 because one option allows you to buy 100 shares. So your profit is $700. Now, how much did we pay for this one? Well, we paid $320 for it. So let's calculate our return on investment, which is specified as the RI. So this would be, we make $700 and we paid for this $320. So this means our net profit is $380. If we take the $380 divided by 320, which was our original investment, 380 divided by 320. So we make a nice 119% return. That is not bad at all, is it? I mean, 119% based on the original investment, even though the stock only moved 5%, that's not bad at all. So the ITM option, as you know, this was the most expensive one. We chose the 124 strike price and it cost us $520. But here, now Apple is trading at 134 and you could buy 100 shares at 124, immediately sell them for 134. So we make 134 minus 124. So we make $10 per option. And since they come in 100 packs, we make $1,000. Yippee, yay. Okay, hey, not so fast, not so fast. We also paid some money for this. So we did pay $520 for it. So our net profit is 1,000 minus the $520. So this means it is $480. Now, $480 is more than the $320 that we made here, right? So here, no, that's what we paid for it. Our net profit was $380. There we go. So $480, definitely more than $380. But let's just see our return on investment. So we are making $480, but we had to bring $520 to the table. 480 by 520. So this means that we are making 92% return. That's not bad at all. I mean, is it? But as you can see, this is where we get the highest return here. In this case, with the ATM option. Does this make sense? It's just some, some basic math here. So even though the net profit here is higher, the return on investment is higher here. Now let's talk about picking the wrong strike price. So let's, let's just summarize here of uh, what has happened. The OTM option was the cheapest one. It only cost us $48 and we lose all the $48, even though the stock moved up 5%. With the ATM call option, we made 119% uh, and here we made 92%. As you can see from this example, it is absolutely important that you're picking the right strike price because the underlying security moved 5% from 127 to 134. And you see often traders who are new to option pick the cheapest option contracts. And this is the OTM option. But in this case, you would have lost the whole premium. 
So the question is, should you pick the most expensive one? Now, as you can see in this example, picking the most expensive option, so the ITM option would have yielded a higher dollar amount, but in terms of return on investment, the ITM option definitely was best. So based on the trading strategy that you use, I can give you a few guidelines here for picking the right strike price. So let's talk about this. First of all, when you are buying options, in this case, you want to buy ATM or ITM options because this is where you have a higher chance of making money if the stock is moving in the right direction. When you're selling options, you want to pick strike prices that are OTM, out of the money, because as you can see here, who wins this money? The option seller, right? Anyhow, let's talk about three important things that I feel you should know about the strike prices. So the first thing that I get often asked is, what happens when the call option hits the strike price? Question is, what would have happened if Apple at some point traded above the strike price of 135? Well, absolutely nothing, unless you choose to exercise the option. But if this happens before the expiration date, which we will cover in the next video, then it would be better actually to sell the option since you make, make more money. And I did a video on this. Uh, it's when to exercise an option or should I exercise options? I'll link to it in the description. Uh, take a look at this. So if it happens before expiration, don't worry about it. Now, the other question is, if I realize that I chose the wrong strike price is, can I change my strike price after I entered the trade? And the quick answer here is, you can't. See, you need to choose a strike price when you enter the trade and you can change it while you are in a trade. What, what you can do is you can roll the option. Here's how it works. So let me just uh, go to this. So what you could do is roll the option. Let's say you bought the OTM option for 135 and you realize it was too ambitious and that Apple probably won't hit 135 before the expiration date. So you can roll the option by selling. So you would sell the 135 option and simultaneously, for example, buy the 132 call. So this is what you could do. This is what they call rolling here. Okay, last thing that I wanna cover, what is the difference between the so-called spot price versus the strike price? So you might have heard it that people talk about the spot price. So what is that? The spot price is actually the current price of the underlying security. So right now, 127.66 is the spot price. And the strike price is the price at which you can buy or sell the shares of the underlying security on or before expiration. So in summary, as you can see, picking the right option strike price is extremely important because it will affect your returns and can make or break you in the market. As I said, when you are a buyer, you want to buy ATM or ITM options. It's even a, a small move in the underlying uh, security, in the underlying stock, can yield double digit gains, as you can see here. Pretty cool, right? Now, when you're an option seller, it's the opposite. You want to sell OTM options that have a low probability of getting a sign.